Um, for those who don't know me, uh, my name is Rafael Rivera. Uh, I am the Associate Dean for Admissions and Financial Aid, and I am a pediatric radiologist at uh, NYU Langone Health. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome you all to our three-year MD uh, Pathway webinar. So um, over the course of the next 30 or so minutes, we're going to be going over a couple slides that are, will introduce you to the program. And I would encourage you um, towards the end of the program to then start setting up questions uh, for all of the speakers, uh, and we will get through as many of them as we can. And all told, the webinar should be about an hour. So I'm joined today, let me see if I can get to here, uh, by several of my colleagues and panelists, um, starting with Joan Candurella, who is our Associate Dean for Faculty Affairs and our three-year MD Pathway Director, Dr. Elizabeth Cohen, who is a professor in the Department of Ophthalmology and is the three-year MD advisor for all our students, uh, Dr. Vicki Harnick, who is our Associate Dean for Curriculum, Dr. Mel Rosenfeld, who is sort of over there, you'll see him in a bit, our Senior Associate Dean for Medical Education, Joanne McGrath, who is uh, my partner here in the Admissions of Financial Aid Office, she's our Assistant Dean, um, and then by two of our current students, Taylor Wingo, who is a three-year MD student in the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, and Carter Surya Devara, I did it better before, uh, who, who is a, a three-year MD student uh, in our PhD to MD three-year pathway in neurosurgery. So um, this is the agenda that we're gonna be covering uh, over the, the next half hour or so. Then I provide a brief overview of the pathway, starting with uh, the all important deadline and timelines. Then we're gonna go over the design of the curriculum and then what the admissions process looks like in more detail. And from there, we'll then um, segue to our two students, Taylor and Carter. They will discuss what brought them to the program and what their experiences have been. And then thereafter, for the last half hour or so, we'll have a question and answer session where we'll get through as many of your questions as possible. Okay. Here are the folks you're going to be seeing again. Um, Dr. Candarella, Dr. Cohen, Dr. Harnick, Dr. Rosenfeld, Joanne McGrath, and Taylor Wingo, and Carter Surya Devara. Better that time. Better. Uh, okay, so again, this is our agenda. And so we're gonna start off by talking about the deadline because uh, we've shifted a lot of things for this admission cycle. Uh, as many folks know, we are shifting to a rolling admissions process now. Um, and our initial acceptances will start going out as early as the early October, mid-October or so. Um, and um, because we are now a, a tuition-free medical school where all our um, students will be getting uh, full tuition scholarships, we wanted to add three-year MD pathway to the fall application mix so that within the fall, you will know if you've been A, accepted, B, you'll know that at the very least, you'll be getting a full tuition scholarship. And you, if you apply to the three-year MD pathway, we hope to get you that acceptance within the fall timeframe as well. We, uh, think that your time is is important and we want to be able to get you a decision as early as possible. So to that end, we have had to move our application deadline up. Previously, it used to be March 1st when we sent out our admissions decisions at the end of January, but because of the rolling model, we asked that all of our applications, if you are considering applying to the 3MD pathway, you have to have the tertiary application submitted by November 15th, 2018. Again, have to have it in by November 15th, 2018. I'll talk in more detail down the road, but that date is also the same deadline for our secondary application. And uh, we'll talk a lot more in a couple of slides. Um, but now I'm gonna segue over uh, to Drs. Candarella and Cohen, who are gonna talk about our three-year MD pathway, the rationale behind it, and what are some of the benefits to you. So good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to talk a little bit about why we formed this pathway. So this pathway came out of a restructuring our, of our curriculum called the Curriculum for the 21st Century, where we realized with changing this curriculum around, we could not only have a traditional four-year pathway, we could form a five-year pathway where we combine the MD program with some of our master's degrees, but also we could have a three-year program. And we were the first academic medical center in the nation to offer a three-year program that allowed acceptance into one of our 20 NYU Langone Health Residency programs through the National Resident Matching Program. So this program started in 2013. 
We currently have, have, have or have graduated a total of 115 students, 53 of them currently in residency right now. In order to be accepted into this highly competitive program, you do have to be accepted into our traditional four-year program. So all of the requirements that are listed on the admissions webpage should be followed because as I said, you first have to be accepted into the four-year for us to consider you for the three-year program. The three-year program is really designed for students who already know what residency program they want to go into because of this natural link with the residency program and the fact that a lot of the core pieces of the program really depend on knowing that specialty choice. As you'll hear about later on, some of the advising, some of the activities that get done are coordinated with the residency program and it's actually the residency program with their faculty, their chair, and their program director that accept the students into the three-year program. We um, can accommodate up to 35 students, and you'll see when we explain on the next slide the different specialties and the number of slots available in each of these specialties. We expect that students will maintain a high level of academic performance, and that, of course, um, then with a conditional acceptance into the residency program. There are other pathways to get into the program. You don't have to get into the program upon getting into the medical school. We do have something called an opt-in pathway that will be described to you later on during our first and second year. But as you'll see with some of the specialties that have smaller number of slots, if a slot is taken, um, um, if a student is accepted into a slot where there's only one slot, that slot won't be available at the opt-in. So if you're thinking about one of those smaller programs and you're certain of the choice, it's best to apply now and get into the program. Certainly there's lots of benefits. We've seen no difference between our third and fourth year students and many of the metrics that we're looking at. Clearly the financial benefit, um, and even though we're now tuition free, there is that financial benefit of you getting into residency and into a paid specialty a year earlier. Other things certainly, the mentoring, as I said, you'll hear about later on, and the educational piece of it where you're forming those relationships with your department during medical school. This next slide just shows our residency programs that offer acceptance in the three-year program and the number of slots. You can see some of our smaller programs like our neurosurgery program only has one slot and our larger programs like internal medicine has eight slots. These slots um, uh, travel along with the class. So like I said before, if a student decides to um, apply and get accepted into neurosurgery at the time of admissions, that neurosurgery slot will disappear. And when we offer slots during opt-in one, neurosurgery will no longer be on the list. So it follows from matriculation to opt-in one to opt-in two. I'm gonna pass it over now to Dr. Cohen. So um, once you are accepted into the three-year program with the ex conditional acceptance into the residency of your choice, you will be assigned a departmental advisor. Um, and this enables you to be integrated into your department from the get-go. I think one of the big advantages of the three-year pathway is this integration into this, your specialty of your choice. I am a three-year, uh, the advisor for all the three-year students and uh, keeping close touch with you. I think it's very important that all the students know this is a very caring community and we are um, here to support our students in any way we can. All medical students at NYU School of Medicine have a Violet Society advisor and you're no different than the four-year students in this regard. Sure, um, now we're going to have Drs. Harnick and Dr. Uh, Dr. Rosenthal, talk about the comparison in the curriculum in the three and four year pathways. Okay. Hi, everybody. Whoa. 
Sorry about that. <laughs> Speeding ahead. Okay, so uh, comparing the three and the four year um, medical school pathways, if you look at the slide, you can see that um, they look relatively similar. Obviously, the one big difference is a three year pathway does not have the fourth year. Uh, in addition to that, if you look at the three year pathway uh, design above, you can see that there's a, a small sort of orangish looking elective slot that begins in uh, about two weeks ahead of the regular uh, matriculation. And so if you're chosen for one of our three year slots and you, uh, in the pre-matriculation period, you would come on campus about two weeks early uh, and we do a little bit of, uh, we do some reading um, uh, sessions and some sessions in the simulation center. Uh, and that gives you two weeks under your belt. Uh, so then you start off uh, with orientation with the rest of the students uh, come mid-August. So that's one difference. Uh, the only other difference really is that in um, the summer between first and second year, students, it's, uh, many of our students will do a research project over the summer. As a three-year pathway student, you would, it would be mandatory for you to do a research project over the summer, and you'd most likely do that in the department in which you've been accepted, unless they give you um, a special dispensation to do it someplace else. Uh, but it's an opportunity for you to engage with the faculty in your um, department and uh, get some more face time with the rest of the people in the department. So those are the, the two main differences between the three-year and the four-year pathway. Other than that, you can see that uh, you spend your first 18 months, um, the purple color, doing the basic science and organ system blocks and preparing you to do the clerkships, which is the sort of turquoise blue year-long uh, section that begins in January. And then you have uh, a shorter stage after the clerkship year uh, that brings you up to graduation. So the beauty of the system is that it's, um, uh, because the curricula is, is so similar, it allows you to, um, there are two instances that we might want to use it. One, that you come in and decided that you want to do pediatrics and then down the line through, you know, at some point in the, uh, the curriculum, you decide, well, maybe you're not quite so sure anymore. So there is an opportunity um, or you're not, uh, you just, for whatever reason, you wanna move into the four-year pathway. It's very easy to move into the four-year pathway because the curriculum is essentially the same. On the other hand, it also allows uh, students to opt into the three-year pathway. And my colleague, Dr. Rosenfeld is gonna tell us how and when you might do that in the curriculum. Okay, as, as Dr. Kanjirella uh, alluded to, there are multiple times where one could enter into the three-year pathway. But keeping in mind that we started off with 35 residency slots, and as you move into the opt-ins, um, that number will decrease by the number of students who are moved into the three-year pathway. So you can start off as a pre-matriculated student. So as Vicki had told you, you would come and do an elective before you came. And, um, but if you're not really sure what residency program you'd like to apply to, then we provide a few opportunities for you to enter the three-year pathway at a later time. The first one we call opt-in one, and that'll be somewhere at the end of January, beginning of February of your first year where you came in to medical school in August and you might have uh, started to develop relationships within a department or do some work in a department. And you felt that I wasn't exactly sure when I entered medical school what I wanted to do, but now after spending some time in a particular department, I really know I wanna do, for example, emergency medicine. So if an emergency medicine spot was still open because a pre-matriculated student may have taken that. But if that spot is open, you would apply in uh, the January, February mark in that first year and um, hear about whether you're accepted into the program or not prior to the summer between your first and second year. The critical thing is that summer between your first and second year, whereas Dr. Harnick told you that um, the summer in a four-year pathway between first and second year is kind of optional. You can do a lot of different things, or you can not do anything if one would want to. Uh, a three-year pathway student doesn't have that option. They are required to do a summer research fellowship between uh, the summer of their first and second year, 
of eight weeks in duration. And that has to be a credit worthy project, which is approved by the Office of Medical Education. So that would be the first option. Uh, we also offer an opportunity approximately midway through your clerkship year. So after spending some time on your clerkships, you may have formulated um, a love or a passion for a particular um, residency program. And again, if that residency program still has a spot available in our three-year pathway, we invite applicants at that time. Um, and it happens somewhere around April or May, you would find out usually by the end of June, whether you were accepted into that residency program. So that would be the second opportunity where you could opt into the three-year pathway if one was, did not want to make the commitment in that first summer. And for those students that are interested in our medical scientist training program, the MD-PhD program, there is an opportunity to also enter the three-year pathway just before the MD-PhD student um, returns to their clinical year. Uh, if, you, if you're familiar with the program, after completing your basic science years, um, you would go into the laboratory for, on average, approximately four years and return back to medical school to begin your clerkships. So just before entering back into medical school to start those clerkships, um, if there was a spot open in the three-year pathway, an MD, PhD student is able to also um, apply for that position. So as you can see, there's plenty of opportunities, plenty of availability, and many different options uh, to apply into a three-year pathway. Um, and this is exactly what C21 is about, Try, uh, providing the student with multiple opportunities to do many things, whether it's a three-year pathway, the four-year pathway, or the five-year pathway. So now um, I'll pass it back to Dean Rivera to give you the information on the benefits of the three-year pathway. Thank you. All right. So, you know, I, I, I think that the professional development and the mentor benefits are arguably the most important parts of this program. But that's not to say that the financial benefits are, are, are inconsequential because they, they are pretty significant. Um, just to provide like a, a quick primer, because, you know, you guys have asked me, what does NPV mean? Um, so essentially, NPV comes from the, the business world where it's uh, think of a company that's looking to launch a product um, and they want to see what the value in today's dollars to that company would be if they launched that product. So um, taking into account what the cost would be to get that product up and running for the first couple of years and then after the break even point, how much profit they would expect to make several years down the road. So um, the NPV for the three year MD pathway looks at all those different factors that go into uh, for a student who chooses the three-year over the four-year pathway. And so people would think, well, that just means the cost of tuition, which you guys no longer have, right? Um, yeah, the cost of tuition is one of those factors, but it's actually not even the biggest factor. There are other things you have to take into account. So for example, you're not gonna have to worry about traveling across the country to do 20 or 30 interviews uh, at residency programs, that's now gone. Um, but the biggest factor is that over the course of your lifetime, you now have an additional year of attending level salary under your belt. So when you compare the net present value in today's dollars for a student pursuing the three-year MD here versus going to another school for their four-year MD program, and here's a big assumption, mind you, you have to assume that that person gets no scholarship there, then the maximum value there is on average about $417,000 in, in today's dollars. That's a pretty significant number uh, when you think about it. You can invest that in, I would say, in a, a 401k early on and retire that much earlier. Um, when you compare our three-year MD program to our four-year program, realizing that they're both gonna be tuition free because they will both get full tuition scholarships, there's still that added value of fast tracking your education. And that value is about 205,000. That averages all residencies because the exact amount for that additional year of attending level salary depends on your specialty choice. And I'm happy to answer any questions when they, when they come through uh, later in the hour. We also have an additional pathway sub pathway, if you will, within the three year pathway called our PhD to MD pathway. Um, what this pathway does is it allows select individuals, namely those individuals who already have a PhD in the biomedical sciences um, to apply to the three year specifically into six, one of six research focused residency tracks. This is for 
PhD students who want to be physician scientists with an emphasis on the scientist part. And these specific residency programs are tailored to allow you protected research time during your residency program. So for example, the, the, uh, the example that I'm most familiar with is the internal medicine residency program, wherein um, once you apply to the program and get accepted, you do your three years of medical school. And then instead of doing three years of internal medicine residency, you do two years. You then have a protected year of research and you have also at the time of acceptance guaranteed entry into your choice of fellowship programs all going through the nrmp process so there are significant savings in time and significant professional and mentoring benefits that occur with these programs so here's the admissions timeline uh, in a nutshell because we have rolled everything into the fall because we are uh, becoming more efficient with how we process our three-year MD uh, applications. What we're going to be doing this year is, as I said earlier, we're going to be starting to send out all our acceptances for the four-year program starting in October and continuing through the end of the year. Um, that means that if at the time that we send you the acceptance, you have already completed your three-year MD app, your tertiary app, then we will then on that specific day start reaching out to the residency program directors to coordinate the interview. So that's why I would recommend that if you are considering this program, please put your application in as early as possible. The deadline is, of course, November 15th, but if you can get in earlier and you get accepted earlier, it does allow you to fast track that acceptance. Once you interview with residency programs, then the final decisions will be sent out as soon as we hear back from residency programs. This is where there is going to be a little bit of flexibility within the time frame because, you know, as, as Dr. Cangiarella said, at that point, the decision on who's accepted into the three-year pathway is dependent upon the residency program director, the chair, and their team. So there are some individuals, some departments that have larger capacity, like internal medicine. They may be able to uh, accept students earlier. There are other departments that may only have one slot. They may want to see everyone that comes through. Their decisions may wait until the end of December or even the beginning of July. Regardless, all our decisions for the three MD pathway for those students who are accepted in this first lot will be out by, and hopefully much earlier, than mid-January. What we will then do is, once we accept our initial wave of applicants, we then have to sit tight until the end of April, beginning of May. At that point, students will then move off of different wait lists. And once we accept people off the wait list, if you had submitted a three-year end the application by the November 15th deadline, and you're accepted then, then we will again fast track your interview with the resident program director and see if they accept you you would then join the class in july so uh again i'm i'm uh, more than happy to answer questions as we go along but the key piece here is if you're considering the program november 15th so now i'd like to ask taylor and carter to come join us so taylor uh is a second year student in orthopedic surgery and carter is also a second year student in neurosurgery um i will let them tell you a little bit about themselves i'll just ask that they tell you um in addition to stuff about themselves uh why they thought of medicine um why you ultimately chose nyu um why the three-year program and how it's been for you since then there you go guys you want to start us off then? sure hi so i'm taylor um how I chose orthopedics. Um, I was exposed to orthopedics at an early age, um, being a tennis player. Um, I think I got really interested in it when I actually um, had a pretty bad uh, hip injury. Um, so I had, I ended up having four surgeries um, on my hip. So I was able to see orthopedics from um, the patient perspective um, and soon after wanted to know more about orthopedics. So I did quite a bit of shadowing um, in the department uh, at UVA where I went to undergrad um, and decided that orthopedics was um, the specialty for me. Um, how I chose NYU, I would say um, I, I was trying to decide between several different programs um, and once I got into the three-year program, um, it was a no-brainer. That day, I withdrew from all the other schools, um, se several other top 10 medical schools. Um, it was an absolute no-brainer for me. Um, and 
I am so, so happy that I did. Um, the experience so far has been fantastic. Um, I really cannot say enough good things about it. Um, I really feel like I'm a part of the residency program already. Um, I feel that there's quite a bit of pressure taken off of me. Um, and that's, you know, big for medical school because there's already, you know, pressure. Um, I, I feel very integrated into the program. Um, I go to Grand Rounds every Wednesday. Um, this past summer, I did what would be considered kind of a sub internship in the department. Um, and, you know, it, I was working with the residents that I will be working with when I'm in the residency program um, and got to know all the faculty and um, really engage with them in the OR and the clinic. Um, it's just been a fantastic experience. Um, I also feel very supported with all the advising um, with Dr. Cohen and um, in the department with my departmental advisor, who's the residency um, director. Um, and so I, I really couldn't be happier. Um, this summer was an incredible experience and it just added to um, uh, my excitement for the residency in a few years. Um, and also knowing that I'm gonna be in New York for the next five years is just an added benefit. Um, living in New York has been fantastic. Um, and uh, so I couldn't be happier. All right, well, that was great. Um, <laughs> I don't know how much more, I, I don't know why I'm here really. Um, so I'll introduce myself, hi guys. My name's Carter. Um, I'm originally from New York, uh, next door in Queens. Um, I went to Duke for my undergraduate studies. Um, I was a major in neuroscience, a double major in neuroscience and biology. Um, I was always um, bound for medicine, I think, from a very early age. Um, but I started research um, around my sophomore year of college and then knowingly um, fell into a rabbit hole and ended up pursuing, turning it into a PhD at Duke. Um, and so I spent eight years in Durham at Duke, uh, four years for undergrad and four years for my PhD, at which point I applied in medical school once that was done. Um, and was uh, in between NYU and a few other schools. Um, and like Taylor, as soon as I got into um, the neurosurgery track program here, it was sort of game over. Um, and that was before we went tuition free and before um, the recent rankings came out. So you guys will have even, should be more of a no brainer for you guys. Um, why, why did I end up choosing um, NYU? Um, other than, um, I guess, unique answers to, to, to compliment what Taylor said. Um, I think one of the biggest factors um, at, about NYU in general was knowing that we'd have experiences at three hospitals all along First Avenue. And I, and I think that's a very unique experience. We have a private hospital, Bellevue, and a VA. Um, and in neurosurgery, and I'm pretty sure for all the other disciplines, we, we have responsibilities at all three hospitals. And so those, those are three very different patient populations um, and all in the epicenter of civilization in New York City. Um, so that was very important to me. Um, and to echo one of the points that um, I think Dr. Rivera brought up um, was once I, once I got into the program, or sorry, before I applied into the program, I really researched what the residency was about here. Um, I always knew I wanted to do neurosurgery you know, forever, um, but, and I knew there were a lot of intrinsic differences between neurosurgical programs around the country. Um, and so, for example, one of the really important things I was looking at um, was whether um, there was a protected research here within neurosurgery. Um, and so neurosurgery is a seven year program, for example, it's a seven year residency and your fifth year, your PGY five year is a protected research year. And you actually have the option at NYU of pursuing that year as a full research year or doing an enfolded fellowship um, to save a year on the back end if you decide you wanna specialize even further. And so having that, op having that option was really important to me. Um, and I know and that, that's not the case at a lot of other programs. Um, so I'd really encourage you to look at that um, coming from a from a background of science too, I also wanted to know whether or not the, the department itself was really invested in research and the faculty were currently doing research and those were really important things to me as well. Um, and so for me, it met all the check marks very quickly. Um, and then one other thing, I think um, Joan brought this up, but the way that our program is structured, um, we spend all of our time with the regular four-year students. And so it would, you'd be hard pressed to figure out who in our classes in the three-year program and who's in the normal four-year program because we do almost everything together. 
Um, surely that'll change during our third year since we have to take step two um, earlier than our other classmates. classmates. Um, but that's a, that was a really big important factor to me because I didn't want to feel like we were a small little group as because we were in this accelerated program. Um, so those are, I think those were the big things that I'm missing there. I think that's pretty much. Yeah, that was good. Was good? Good. All right. <laughs> All right. So then uh, I think we're to the point where we can start asking questions. Why don't folks then come behind me? Um, and then we will. Uh, yes. All right. So now the questions. And uh, let me see. Is there a way I can expand this? All right. Let me uh, bear with me as I, I get through. Okay. Oh, and I just wanted to also point out that um, we uploaded a handout of uh, this presentation so that you can review uh, at your leisure. And we're also going to be putting the um, video of this online um, within a week or so, give or take. Uh, and it'll also go on our YouTube channel. So uh, let's see. Have you guys begun interviews? Yeah, actually, this is our second day. Uh, we started yesterday. We're going to be continuing interviews through the second week of December. Is there an opt-in for the MD-PhD? Like if we decided we wanted to do research after already being accepted into the MD program. So if I understand the question, and correct me if I'm wrong. So what you're saying is you would start as an MD student, but you would transfer into the MSTP pathway. Um, whether you would then be able to be accepted into the three-year program. Right. No. So, so, I mean, what do you guys think? Eventually. So, the, like, the hard part there is transferring it to the MD PhD. Right. Right. It does happen. We have right. That student right. But that's the hard part. And right. then you can apply from the MSTP Correct. program to the three years. Once you have finished the MSTP program. Yeah. But when you enter and you're a three year student, your spot in a residency is for a specific specific year. Right. So you would be giving up that spot if you switch to become exactly. an MD PhD student and then right. you go the MD PhD opt in years later. Right. You don't so, keep your spot for all the no. years. So this would this would work if you were accepted and you started off on the four year track and then applied to the MD PhD. I've I've mm -hmm. seen two people who've been accepted. Mm -hmm. Both people, those are the only people I know who have applied. And then after that, then you stand, do the standard MSDP training pathway. And then at the completion of your PhD, then you can apply to opt in. But, you know, as Dr. Cohen said, if you start off in the three year and you wanted to switch into sperm, you would have to give up your three year MD residency because it's timed. I think you should point out the dual degree. You can't. Oh, yeah. And we'll probably get some of those questions. People ask about the dual degrees. We've, we've looked at ways of incorporating the three-year and the dual degree, but because of the timing of the residencies, it's, it's just not feasible at this point in time. What is the value of research conducted at an undergraduate level if you want to go into a residency where research is expected or encouraged, such as neurosurgery? I think certainly, you know, the application process, when you apply into the three-year program, the program is going to be looking at what you've done, what kind of shadowing you've done, how certain are you of the choice that you're mm -hmm. picking. So certainly, you know, there would be an advantage to having research in that field. If I'm not accepted to the medical school yet, will I have to wait for an acceptance to be considered for this program? Yeah, as we said earlier, um, the admissions pathway for the three MD process is contingent upon you first getting accepted to the four year MD pathway. Um, that said, if you are seriously interested in the program, I would advise you to put in the application early so that as soon as we send the acceptance, we can get the ball rolling on setting up the interview with our, uh, you know, specific residency program. Does the PhD to MD program share slots with the rest of the three-year MD program. For example, if a PhD MD student is accepted into the internal medicine three-year MD, are there now seven slots left for non-PhD to MD students? Yes. yes. Right. So, uh, you know, Carter is one of the students who went into the PhD to MD program um, in, uh, in neurosurgery. And so that was the one slot that they used for that year. So, yes. Thank you, Taylor and Carter, for sharing your experiences. Uh, do you feel that you still have time to participate in other activities and hobbies while in the three-year MD program? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think you, like Carter said, um, you really, it's the same, you feel the same as a four-year student. Um, 
So you have as much time as you want for outside activities. Um, you also, it's kind of department specific for how, um, how involved you want to get uh, in the department before you go on to residency. So you want to get more involved, you can. Some students in the three-year program may not be as involved. Um, so it's really up to you and also department specific. What about switching residencies? So we have had experience with um, students that are in the three-year MD pathway switching to other residencies. And I think the caveat is if a slot is open, meaning a slot hasn't been filled, we do try to accommodate the student, but it is contingent on the residency program director and department's approval of taking that student into another specialty. We, we expect that sometimes it's not the right fit, and I think people with not a lot of experience in the field that they're going into come here and they spend the first few months shadowing and realize that it's a very different field. So, you know, we don't like that, but obviously we'll accommodate and help any student. We want you to pick the right thing because you have to spend the next 40 years of your life doing it. But we recommend that you apply to the three-year program if you honestly think you do know what you right. want to go mm -hmm. into. You know, I will say that um, when we first started the program, there was a sense that there would be more people switching. And actually, it's been much lower than what we had initially anticipated. And the majority of the people, correct me if I'm wrong, who have switched from one residency to another, um, it hasn't been that disparate of a change. It's been somebody who, for example, wanted to do pediatric anesthesiology and thought that maybe pediatrics was the way to go and then realized that it's separately through anesthesia and then you go from there. So, um, but yeah, I mean, case in point, you, you the more successful applicants uh, who get into the program are those who have demonstrable interests and activities within the field. And so that should help you decide. You should have a reasonable degree of certainty that, that that's a, a good choice for you. How many students are accepted into the NYU three-year MD pathway program? Um, so that varies year to year in the group that uh, of first-year students that just started. Um, that's roughly 10% of the MD uh, class. Um, and then when you look at um, what the output is after all the various opt-in pathways, so the group that's of graduating uh, this May, somewhere on the order of about 22% of the MD class um, is going to be made up of the three-year. And when all is said and done, I mean, if, if you had, if I had to hazard a guess, I would say that in the coming years, probably looking at somewhere on the order of about 30% or, or more of the class that'll end up choosing the three-year MD, either you know at the pre-matriculation route, which is you know when your guys are looking at it before applying, or through the various opt-in approaches. If you don't get into the three-year MD pathway during the application cycle, do you still have the opt-in opportunities available? Yes. Absolutely. So you, you know, for the MD students, you have two opt-in opportunities um, at the um, towards the middle portion of your first year and towards the end of your second year. Given that you are guaranteed a spot in residency, what does that mean for performance on the step one and step two exams? So obviously we expect students to study hard for the exams regardless, but um, it is true that a student has to just pass those exams. I can tell you that looking back at the class, nobody really just does that. The students, as I said, in the three-year pathway really have the same you know, mean scores as our four-year students. I think once you get to the school, People are studying hard and trying to do as well as they can do because I think another important point is that sometimes those scores follow you when you're applying for a fellowship or the future, you know, experience and somebody can still look at those scores. So certainly our students have studied for step one. How does a program account for specialties like diagnostic radiology that require a preliminary year? Are these also done at NYU? So we do offer for those programs that require the preliminary year, we have uh, a lot of availability in our preliminary, preliminary medicine program. We have less um, spots in our preliminary surgery program, but we've been able to accommodate every student that wanted to do it. For the student panelists, do you feel that the workload is a lot more rigorous than the four-year program? No, not at all. Um, I think anything that we do in addition to the four-year students has to do with the involvement we want to have within our respective departments. And 
the expectations have been very minimal. Um, and so anything I think, you know, the things that we do in addition, um, I think routinely Taylor and I will do our grand rounds mm -hmm. um, and try to shot, uh, try to be in the OR maybe twice, two to three times a month during when, when school is really rigorous. Um, and those that's totally at will. Um, otherwise, um, just generally speaking about NYU, the, the pass fail curriculum really eases tensions and people um, very quickly will find, everybody finds a balance between how much you need to work in order to succeed. Um, but, uh, oh, I just want to add one other thing is I think the workload actually um, may be less for the three-year three -year pathway students just because you have the pressure taken off of you that you don't have to just, you know, build your resume. Um, for for the match process, um, so it's definitely you feel relieved um, and you can study for the sake of studying and learning the material um, rather than just getting a you know trying to get into residency. I forgot to ask research projects. You guys are involved in, in projects. Anything in particular you guys talk about? Um, so I am not currently involved in any research, but um, working on. Yeah, and that actually brings up a great point that I forgot to mention when we did a little reveal. Um, I think one of the really, really critical aspects of this program is the opportunity to have a longitudinal focus of study um, that spans medicine, your medical school education and residency. Um, you know, very, very infrequently, it's very infrequent that people that are pursuing this, this career choice get to choose where they're going to be until they're attending. Um, by virtue of how competitive it is to get into medical school, college, medical school, and residency. Um, and so what that's afforded me is to, is to think very large and broad and be a little risky about what it is I want to do in terms of research. Um, and that's given me an opportunity to start things um, from year one that I, that I know won't be complete over three or four or five years, but we're sort of thinking long term over, over the course of a decade. So yes, that's the answer. All right. How does the preparation for the USMLE exams change with the three-year program? So, so there's really no difference. So again, I want to emphasize this program for the first two and a half years of the three-year program is identical to the four-year program. The only difference is that the summer between year one and year two is required. But I can tell you that the majority of our four-year students do a summer in between the first and the second year. So two and a half years, you do exactly the same. And, and then everybody is studying for step one. You have four to six weeks, just like our other four-year students, to study for step one. You take the step one at the end of January. Now you're at year two and a half plus a month. And then it's that next few months that are different. And those differences are you, you sit very quickly for the two parts of step two of the USMLE. A lot of our students feel they're well prepared because if you study for step one, you need very little amount of study time to study for step two, where our four-year students could potentially take step two a whole entire year later. So that's, that's the biggest difference. You're going to get enough time to sit for uh, studying for the boards. We have that built into the program. All right. And uh, so folks, please forgive me if I skip your question. Um, I'm, I'm just skipping a couple where the questions were essentially identical to questions we've already answered, just in the interest of time. Uh, what about applying to residencies that are not at NYU if you do the three-year? Will you be accepted? So currently, we have an arrangement for the residencies through the National Residency Matching Program, which allows students to have the choice to where they want to apply. So yes, students are allowed to apply to outside residency programs, and we will guarantee you that we will match you here. I can tell you from experience throughout the country, these programs are newer. There are only about 17 schools nationally offering a program. So I do think over time, it'll become more acceptable that a third year, three year student can get a residency anywhere. But at the moment, um, uh, you know, students are taking their chances. We have had two students match at outside programs. Um, both of them had special situations, I would say, um, coming from their uh, institutions where they had already some connection, whether it be that that was their undergraduate um, institution or they had some mentors that were there already. So a small amount of experience um, I would say if, you know, to apply here, you should be really interested in staying here because that works out the best. 
What factors do the residency directors consider when selecting applicants for the accelerated track? So they applicate, the residency program directors will have access to all of your admissions materials. So everything you submit through AMCAS, they will be reviewing. They'll also obviously see the tertiary application, which includes your choice of specialty, and then your answers to several essays uh, justifying why that is the specialty choice for you. In terms of what they're going to value, obviously they'll, they're, they're going to value um, uh, the same things that they would look at when they were evaluating an applicant who was applying from medical school there. So they're going to be looking at your academic track record. They're going to be looking at your research experiences, your, your activities within the field, uh, how you perform on interview day. Uh, any other uh, things you guys would like to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I just think they're going to grill you on why you want to go into their residency program. Mm -hmm. And and if they feel you are not ready or your decision really isn't confirmed, that will really be the deciding of not accepting a student into the program. Are all slots filled each application cycle? If not, do you recommend or refer students to open slots if they do not get into the residency track of their choice? Um, so no, we routinely don't fill the um, uh, all 35 slots in that pre-matriculation round, i.e. The, the, the point at which people who can apply to that program before they even start. But that's, uh, you know, sort of intentional. Um, their programs are not going to be accepting someone who they do not feel is a good fit for them. So to the point of your second question, which is, would we then refer you to a different program that sort of goes counter the, to the whole goal of the program, which is you should be applying to programs that are really good fits for you. And if, if you can't get into, you know, uh, plastics and that was your, then you shouldn't feel that then you should then apply to uh, anesthesiology just because they have an open slot. Um, but it does happen that, for example, sticking with the plastic example, they don't take somebody in the pre-matriculation route, but then they take somebody in opt-in one or opt-in two. So that's that. What would it look like to complete a dual MD, MPH MD with a three year program? So, as we said earlier, we currently don't have any plans to offer that because logistically it gets hard to tie the residency when it comes down to the completion of both degrees. If you have been invited to interview prior to submitting the tertiary application, are you still eligible to apply for the three year program? Yes. So, the deadline is November 15th. Um, if you've already interviewed, um, and if you were already accepted before November 15th, you can still submit that application. Um, I would just say that again, uh, if you have an inclination to apply, I would apply earlier rather than later. It uh, is two essays um, and uh, you know, chance favors a prepared mind. So it, it's just good to have that in there. And the other thing I'd like to add is we realize that it's um, it can be financially problematic to have to come back to New York twice for folks who are like uh, maybe in California, West Coast. We cover the transportation costs for the three-year MD interview if you're granted one, because um, we think it's only fair that you should only have to pay for the one MD interview and then not for the additional ones. And if there was a way we could have done it so that we could have tied the four-year MD interview with the three-year interview, we would have. It's just logistically that's uh, quite challenging to get 20 plus residency programs to get their entire team on call for that one specific day. But we're still trying. Um, can I also stay involved in research throughout the three years as well? Absolutely. Um, what additional qualifications, experiences do you value in three year MD program candidates? I think we kind of talked about that one. Let's see. When does a student have to choose which specialty to go into in the three year pathway? So you choose that specialty at the time of application, whether you apply before you start medical school as part of the pre-matriculation route or at either of the two opt-in points. You have to know at that point, you can't apply to the three year separate from the program. They are linked. Okay. Uh, I think I answered that one already. So how can you apply to a three year program after being extended an interview? Just complete the tertiary and if the admissions committee accepts you, then when we send out that acceptance decision, we are concurrently informing the residency program director in the apartment to which you applied that you've been accepted and then they will reach out to you to set up that interview. For our students, is there any stress involved with the shorter time between steps one and two of the USMLE exam? Take your time. 
yeah, we have yeah. examples, but, but from everything we we've heard from our from our seniors and everything, um, it hasn't been an issue at all. Yeah. For the PhD to MD pathway, can you still be accepted to the three-year program even if your desired specialty is not on the list shown? Right. So the for that specific pathway uh, that again is meant to produce physician scientists with an emphasis on the scientist part. There are six programs here then that have specific programs tailored to provide you with a significant amount of protected research time. Um, but that doesn't mean that if you have a PhD, you are limited to just applying to those pathways. So if you have a PhD, you can apply to the 20 residency programs that we have through the regular three-year MD pathway. It just means that that program may or may not have the same amount of protected research time. What exactly is a Violet Society advisor? What do you want to answer? No, Vicky. <laughs> so the Violet Society is our is our mentoring program that um, all of our students get as they come on campus. It's uh, divided into uh, four groups that are um, uh, that are so, and there are three advisors per group. Uh, and so you're in, uh, you, so you get a faculty mentor and you also get peer mentors who are uh, students in your own Violet Society. And it's an opportunity to get together both in small groups and a little bit larger groups um, for mentoring. And it's also, there's an Olympics and there's some social events that take place then you do so in your own Violet Society. So it's a very nice, um, you know, support system, whether it be social and academic. Think uh, Hogwarts, Gryffindor, <laughs> Slytherin, you know, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, that kind of thing. Okay. Are non-traditional um, students or not biology-related major students commonly admitted? Will the lack of experience in medicine hurt chances, especially during interview? So for the first part of the question, yeah, we don't have any specific preference for what your major would be. Um, but with the last question, will the lack of experience in medicine hurt chances? Uh, yeah. It, it, they're going to want to see that you have relevant experience in the field that you're applying to because they want to know that you've put a good deal of thought into it, that you have seen the pros and cons of every career choice, and this one in particular, and that you are committed to this uh, program choice. Without having any experience, uh, I, it's pretty likely that you would not be accepted to that program. Any other thoughts? Yeah. As a gauge for the program, what percentage of those matriculating directly into the three-year MD program continue all the way through it? Okay, so how many people start and continue? Um, so we something? have had, yeah, I mean, it's like 95%. So we've had about four students decelerate. And actually, we have six students decelerate because of their own choices, whether they decided on another field. Some of them decelerated, you know, for health issues, for, um, couples match, and we have decelerated um, three of our own students for uh, academic reasons. So about 10 out of the 115 that are still in the program, 10%. Okay. Uh, Ms. Taylor Wingle, were you able to participate in any research projects in your first MD year, or did you wait until the summer after your first year? Yes. I mean, I could definitely get involved. I didn't, um, but I had... Uh, definitely the opportunities to. Can you apply to multiple residencies? Uh, so I, 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 you know, if I were to poll the group, I think most people would say that after seeing the webinar, that would be a no. Um, because again, they want to make sure that you are confident in your decision to pursue field X or Y. Uh, okay. Thank you for the informative presentation. Oh, thank you. Uh, would you advise students not to apply to the three MD pathway if they do not know for certain which residency program they wish to pursue. Yeah. Yeah, you should, you should um, as we said earlier, we, we don't expect you to sign a contract in blood that says you're going to be sticking with this no matter what. But we do expect people have really thought about the decision and are very confident. I, I don't know of any of our students who started the program that are not reasonably confident that that's what they wanted to go into. Do we have switches? Yes. But they go into it thinking that that's what they're going to end up sticking with. And they're the opt-in pathways, so that if you're not absolutely sure, you can just, you know, wait a little bit and see. Good point. Besides the difference between available spots for each specialty, are specific specialties more competitive? 
Like there is one spot for urology, surgery, and pathology, but is there a significant number of difference in the number of people applying for each? So I would say, yeah, I mean, this is like a, you know, uh, there are residency programs that uh, people apply to uh, during their fourth years. They vary in the amount of competition and the competition is really a function of how many people are applying for X number of spots. Um, so yeah, there is that, that function of, of some residencies have fewer spots, but there's also the other function that you alluded to, which is that some residency programs tend to get an outsized amount of, of interest in terms of applications. Um, so the one thing, so the number of slots, the way the number of slots are calculated is it's 10% of the size of our residency program. So the actual number of slots are really limited by how big our program is. And then the competitiveness yeah. factor comes in as well. Right. It's not like, uh, you know, neurosurgery or orthopedics came up with the number of slots they said because they said, well, we can, we're competitive, so we know that we can limit it. Right. No, it's, it's based on that. But, but yeah, I mean, there are going to be programs that have more applications for the given number of spots, and then that, by definition, makes it more competitive. It also varies year by year, as you said. So when our graduating class last year had 13 students going into psychiatry. The year before, there were less. Yeah. So, you know, it just, it, it's sort of a luck of the draw also, like who's interested in what in a given year. That's true. So there are only X amount of spots that are given out the first year for the three-year program. And if you, if you decide that you would like to apply after you're already in the four-year track and all the spots for that residency are already filled up in the three-year program by others, does that mean that you will not be able to switch to the three-year track? Yes. Yes, yeah, right. There won't be an opening for you to apply into that position. So you, you you will either have to decelerate if you're already in the track, or you know not change the track, not change the position. Or yeah. you can apply as a four-year pathway student to that same residency. There's no there isn't a quota. So if they had a three-year pathway, that's not that they're not going to take a four-year pathway student at the appropriate time. Exactly. And then I think we're going to have to answer just a one or two more questions because the hour is almost up and I just had a knock on the door. I've got a, a, a training session I have to give at three, unfortunately. Um, all right, so we did that one. We did that one. If we are rejected from the three-year program, does that disqualify us from the four-year program? Okay, that's a good question. Um, no, actually. Uh, so if you are not accepted into the three-year program, your four-year acceptance remains in place. And I also want to let people know that sometimes they feel that if they're not accepted into residency X, that their ability to get into residency X is, is no longer there. Well, um, no, we have had people who successfully applied through the opt-in and gotten in. Doesn't mean that they uh, fill that spot. Sometimes people consider that. And, and, and then as Dr. Harney said, yeah, there's worst case scenario, which is really not a worst case scenario. You apply to the four-year program and then you apply broadly and, and uh, our programs you know, know and, and, and love our NYU students. So um, that, that's the other option. Again, C21, our three-year is all about options. So I, I hope that people can see that, uh, that what we've done here allows you to fast track your education and provides you with the flexibility to be the kind of docs that you want to be. So what we're going to do now, since the hour is up, is I will ask my team to look through these questions that we haven't gotten to, um, either directly or by answering similar questions, and then we will parse them out to the group, and then uh, through the admissions office, we will get back to you on those questions. And again, uh, I would encourage you to review our the handouts so that all the slides are there, and the video will be up shortly. And then I would be remiss if I didn't uh, tell you that we've got two more upcoming webinars, right, on September 27th, uh, which looks at all the various wellness initiatives that we have here out of the Office of Student Affairs. Um, and on uh, October 25th, our financial aid webinar, where we'll talk again at, at greater length about our tuition-free initiative, uh, our full cost attendance scholarships, uh, and so on and so forth. So thank you all for joining us. I, I hope this was informative. Uh, and I look forward to seeing many of you as you come through here for interviews. Uh, best of luck, and let us know if you have any other questions. Bye-bye now.